God bless you all as we meet today on the screen. I'd like to share with you a presentation which has really excited me a lot as I have done some little bit of findings here and there, of course, by God's grace and through His Spirit. And I'm excited to share it with you. May you watch this and may you listen to it prayerfully. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we dive into this presentation, may your glory be revealed by our Spirit. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Greetings in the name of Lord Jesus, our King, our Savior, our Righteousness, our High Priest, our Passover Lamb, the author and the finish of our faith, the captain of our salvation. Today, I would like us to look at the DNA of God. You know, uh, like produces like. Uh, a whale will never give birth to, to dolphins and uh, a crocodile will never give birth to a chimpanzee. In the same way, when you plant the seed of uh, a guava tree, it will never give you mangoes. So like produces like. Now, if we are the sons and daughters of the Most High God, if we are created in His image, what is supposed to come out of us and what is supposed to come out of us, where is it found? If it is possible for us to reflect the DNA of God in us, then what is the DNA of God? That's what we're going to look at today. So DNA is the chemical name for the molecule that carries genetic instructions in all living things. The DNA molecule consists of two strands that wind around one another to form a shape known as a double helix. Every person is unique. Just look around. It's hard to miss even identical twins have some differences. Just ask them. So what causes all of this diversity and what's its purpose? John chapter 1 verse 1 to 4. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life and the life was the light of man. So here we understand that the Word was from the beginning and the Word was God and all things were made by Him and without Him nothing was made. So from that we know and we understand and we conclude that Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior he is not a created being. He is the creator. He became flesh. He became what he wants to be. And that will also look at it as we go deeper into this presentation. So since Jesus Christ the Lord our God is the creator, Isaiah 43 verse 7 says, Even everyone that is called by my name, I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. So here Bible tells us that uh, God has created us. Of course, he has created us for his glory. And when he says, I have formed him, that comes in the aspect of he wants us to give him the full control of our lives. So whatever we go through, when he presses the button of for Romans 8.28, all things works together. That button, when he has pressed, when we put our hands in his hand, by faith he carries us through and he forms us. He forms us into his likeness, in his image, to reflect his character and his spirit. And as he's forming us, he's also shading off from our hearts and our souls and our character all the defects of sin. So here are two points concluded. Jesus Christ is the creator and he has created us for his glory and that's the purpose. Colossians 1 verse 16 to 17 says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things are held together. So please pay attention to this, uh, this uh, scripture here. It tells us all things were created by who? Lord Jesus Christ. And again he says all things were created by him and for him. And it says, He is before all things. So all things before they came to be from His power when He was creating, He was there from everlasting to everlasting. Meaning, 
He's been there. He will be there. He will continue to be there. And that's Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. So here, another point is, he's not a created being. He created everything. And all things are held together. By who? By him. Meaning, he holds the entire universe, the entire creation in the palm of his hand. Meaning, everything, everything is in him. And everything is by him. John 8 verse 58, Jesus said unto them, Very rarely I said to you, before Abraham was, I am. You see, let me take you back. Colossians. Colossians tells us that uh, all things were made by him and he was there before all things. You see, if he was before all things, John 8 58 tells us, before Abraham was, I am. So that tells us that it is true. Before anything came into the creation, he was there. And that's why Isaiah 43 verse 7 says, Even everyone that is called by my name. Now, everyone that is called by my name, I have created him for, his, for, for my glory. That's what he says. And when he told Moses to go see Pharaoh, Pharaoh did not understand any other God besides himself because he was celebrated and worshipped as God. When Moses asked God, what should I tell him? Who has sent me? Then God told Moses, go tell him, I am has sent me. So here Jesus Christ is revealing himself that I am in the Old Testament. I am in the New Testament. I am for eternity. Psalm 33 verse 6. Now, as we have concluded that Christ Jesus is the creator, now we look at it how he has created everything. Psalm 33 verse 6 says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. For he spoke and it was done, he commanded and it stood fast. So, by the word, the word. Remember, the, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh. We are looking at the DNA of God. He created everything by the word that came out of his mouth. He spoke and it happened. But he answered, that's Matthew 4 verse 4. And said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So here again, let's, 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 let's take some, some, some boxes here. Let's, let's, let's take some notes. Jesus Christ is a creator. He created everything by the word of his mouth. And Matthew 4 verse 4 tells us we are created, we are designed. The purpose of our entire existence is to live by this word. The word that comes out of the mouth of God. The word by which he created heavens, earth and all that is in it. Okay. So what is God's genetic code? What is God's DNA? Let's look at it now. You see, Exodus chapter 34, verse 6 to 7 says, And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God. Number one, merciful and gracious. Number two, number three, long-suffering and abundant in goodness. That's number four. And truth, five, mercy, six, that's merciful. For thousands, forgiving, that's seven, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. So these are the attributes of God. You see, the substance, the substance which is found in the seed of mango, that's what creates what is deposited inside in that, in that seed. And that is God's divine wisdom, creative genius which has deposited what is found in that seed of mango. And when you plant a mango seed, you'll never reap or harvest guavas or bananas because what is inside is what is going to come out. Now, when Moses asked God, show me your glory, you know, we've talked so much about your glory, Lord, you know, I want to see your glory. And God said, okay, this is my glory. And when God told Moses to hide himself in the cleft of the rock, because God says, no one can see my face and live. I'll show you my back. And as he was walking, he said, this is who I am and this is my glory. I'm merciful. I'm gracious. I'm long-suffering. I'm abundant in goodness. In truth, I keep mercy. I'm merciful. And I forgive iniquity and transgression and sin. So the character of God, as we ask us, what is the DNA of God? What comes out of God is what is inside God. And what is inside God is who he is. And you cannot try to decipher God by putting God in some scientific debate on where God came from, where was he before, before God was there, what was there. The truth is here. He says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So 
we should praise God that he has revealed to us on who he is through the scriptures. We cannot decipher him through science and through all that which we think we can try to attempt to break down on defining him to be who he is. We receive from him what he has revealed to us and that is good for us. So God's DNA, God's DNA is who he is. God's DNA is his character. God's DNA is his glory. God's glory is what he says, what he becomes. As he says, I am that I am. And let's go deeper now. Genesis 1 verse 26 says, And God says, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. So you see, like I said, like produces like. When you, when you, when you have uh, uh, a certain breed of dog, let's say you've got a Rottweiler. A Rottweiler is not going to give birth to, to pit bulls. Like produces like. Now when God says, let us produce something out of us in our image and in our likeness. And what is the image of God and what is the likeness of God is also what we are going to look at it because that also gives all the attention and limelight to the DNA of God. Matthew 5 verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. Now when God said, when God said that let us make man in our image, in our likeness, meaning God said let's have this, this family, these sons and daughters. And Matthew 5 verse 9 said, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called children of God. Meaning, if me and you, we are claiming to be children of God, sons and daughters of the Most High God, it should not just be endorsed through us agreeing with our fundamental beliefs that we stand for this truth which was held and proclaimed by Lord Jesus, the prophets, the apostles, the reformers and now we have to carry this torch in this end time and we have to continue under the bloodstained banner of Lord Jesus Christ. There is nothing wrong with that but the, the character of God, the DNA of God, if we are from him, if we are indeed his sons and daughters, the imprint of his character the deposit of his glory in our hearts, in our souls, in our entire being, written and printed by the Holy Spirit as he says, I'll write my law. And he'll only write if we let him. We'll be peacemakers. Meaning, from guava to you pluck guavas, you don't pluck uh, mangoes. Romans 8 verse 14, for as many as are laid by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God or they are the children of God. So understand these also. Another attribute of uh, the, the likeness of God is all his children, they are led by the Spirit. Meaning, they let the Holy Spirit to lead them. That's one of the attributes of God's character. Colossians 3 verse 6 says, For which things sake the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience. So they are children of God and they are also children of disobedience. Now the children of disobedience, they walk contrary to the Holy Spirit's leading. They walk contrary to the DNA of God. What do I mean by that? Light produces light. Light, L-I-G-H-T, will produce light. Darkness will produce darkness. If God is light, light will come out of us. And remember, light is not a set of beliefs like fundamental beliefs. Light is not acquiring a church position or becoming a church president. Light is to reflect the, the character of God. Light is to radiate with the DNA imprint of who God is in us. Emmanuel, God with us. God living in us, the Holy Spirit. First John 3.10 says, in this, the children of God are manifest. You see, manifest means God is manifesting himself in us. And he'll only manifest himself in us if we live by what he says. If we do what he says. Now, pay attention to this now. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh. Now, that's Lord Jesus Christ. By him, all things were created and nothing was created. Without him and all things were made by him and for him. And he was there before all things. So, the word that became flesh, the word that was there, the word that is God. God designed us to live by that. Now, when we abide with that word, now that word, again, I repeat, is not just uh, fundamental beliefs. That word is God. And when we live by that word, that's the only time God is manifesting himself through us. 
And the children of devil, who are those? Whosoever does not, righteousness is not of God, neither he that loves not his brother. Okay, now understand this. 1 John 3 verse 4 says, Whosoever is born of God does not commit or continue in sin. For his nature remains in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. So the nature of God, the DNA of God, the glory of God remains in us. And the glory of God, the nature of God is the word. The word was God and the word was God. You see? So when we live by the word, when we do what he says, which is going beyond fundamental beliefs and abiding with the, with the Beatitudes and other teachings of Lord Jesus Christ and other sayings of Lord Jesus Christ, that's when we manifest Christ Jesus living in us. And again, I read 1 John 3 verse 9. Whoever is born of God, means whoever is a child of God, does not commit sin, meaning does not continue in sin. Why? Because his nature remains in him. The nature takes over. And he cannot sin. That's future now. There will come a time we will not sin because he is born of God. Nature and revelation are like the steps of Christ, chapter 1, page 10. Nature and revelation are like testify of God's love. A father in heaven is the source of life of wisdom and joy. Look at the wonderful and beautiful things of nature. Think of their marvelous adaptation to the needs and happiness, not only of man, but of all living creatures. The sunshine and the rain that gladdens and refresh the earth and hills and sea and plains all speak to us of the creator's love. It is God who supplies the daily needs of all his creatures. So here, nature and revelation are like the testify of God, you see. Not only of man, but of all living creatures. So it tells us from Seps to Christ also in the inspiration, the imprint, the signature of God is found everywhere in the entire creation. Franz Halberg is widely considered the father of chronobiology. This tall gentleman from Romania worked at the University of Minnesota in the U.S. in an office cramped with book cells that were stacked with copies of journals and papers he produced over the years. He insisted that we humans don't just experience circadian rhythms of approximately 24 hours. We operate under septum, which is weekly, the seventh day cycle rhythm. Now understand the word chronobiology and what Ellen G. White said, that God's imprint, God's signature is found in the entire creation. And this man, he says that we operate under circumception, which is a seven days rhythmic power. Research has uncovered many bodily systems and functions that seem to rise and fall in seven day cycles. This include heartbeat, blood pressure, body temperature, hormone levels, acid content in the blood, red blood cell count, oral temperature, female breast temperature, urine chemistry and volume, and ratio between the brain's neurotransmitters called epinephrine and norepinephrine and the flow of several body chemicals such as the stress coping hormone cortisol even the common cold is circasectin so that which i have highlighted in yellow and blue i want you to pay attention all these living organisms has seven day cycles even the common cold is within the seven day cycle now we've come across this covid now and what is the incubation period of the new coronavirus. According to CDC, the incubation period of the COVID-19 is thought to extend to 14 days. So here again, the incubation period of coronavirus in a body is also falling under the circumcision. 14 means 7, 7. And that is 7 day cycles. Now 7 is God's number. Remember that. After the ascension of Lord Jesus Christ, when the church was formed by the apostles, they ordained seven deacons. Remember, God's throne is surrounded by the rainbow in heaven. The rainbow has seven colors. And we know all that seven continues and the seventh day is God's day, the Sabbath. Doctors have long observed that response to a malaria infection or pneumonia crisis peaks at seven days. Chickenpox symptoms are high fever and small red spots usually appear almost exactly two weeks, 14 days after exposure to the illness. And surgical patients tend to have an increase in swelling on the 7th and 14 days after the surgery. So this 7th day, the 14 number, circumcision, the 7th day cycle continues because Ellen G. White also said in Sepsu Christ, God's signature is found in the entire creation and God created everything by the word of his mouth. So like produces like. Remember that. God knew all of this because he created us. Perhaps that's why he commanded uh, in Genesis 17 verse 12 that the baby boys were to be circumcised on the one week after they were born. Some scholars still didn't realize that 
on the eighth day is the Hebrew way of saying one week after, which is after the seventh day on the eighth day, because the eighth day of the Jewish week was also the first day of the following week, according to Leviticus 23, verse 39, from evening to evening. So there again also, why did God say that every boy child should be circumcised after the seventh day? There comes the second septum rhythm, the seventh day rhythm. The second septum rhythm is a cycle consisting of seven days in which many biological processes of life they resolve. From the medical point of view, so-called second septum about seven days, reactive periods are of predominant interest. This periodicity can be observed in numerous adaptive and compensating processes. It does not depend on the external week cycle and was already known to the antiquity, meaning even the people of old in the time of Egypt and the Greek big think tanks of all those we know that Aristotle and all those people, they also knew this because they observed something. And this seven day cycle continues because if God's DNA should be seen in us, then we should abide with the signature of God, which is imprinted in the nature of the very foundation. And that is also the number seven, which belongs to God, the Sabbath. Besides all the characteristic attributes of who God is, He's merciful, He's loving, He's kind and He's gracious, all that should manifest from us. And as we continue, we should also look at this thing called Lemlin. Because Colossians says all things are made by Him. And 1 Colossians 17 uh, says, verse 17 says, For He is before all things and by Him all things consist. So what is a Lemlin? Uh, Lemlin is an essential molecule that is found inside your DNA. Think of it as the glue that holds and keeps your body together. The word consists has the same meaning to unite or to bind together. So on your, on your screen, on your left hand side, the black and white image you see, that's an exact electronic microscopic image of how lemonin looks. Now it looks like an image of a cross. And think of the Passover. They were asked to put the blood on the doorpost. When they were asked to put the, door on the blood on the doorpost, the men were putting the blood on their doorpost. And when you put the blood the way it is reflected, it is shown in this slide. Because Jesus said in the book of John 10 verse 9, I am the door. It creates a cross. When it creates a cross, and just as laminin also looks just exactly like the cross, it is found in the DNA. And laminin holds the entire DNA together, our entire being. Without laminin, we'll all be like jelly. No strength, nothing will be just like without shape. Now, when you also decipher the, the sanctuary, even in the sanctuary, Christ is everywhere. And even there it is found, the cross. And that's why Colossians 1 verse 17 says, By him all things are held together. And laminin protein holds us together in our entire being because it is found in our DNA. And we were created by God. And the imprint of God who is our creator is found in the DNA of God, which is his character. And it is known everywhere. That's why even devil worshippers, they wear upside down crosses there on the Baphomet on the left hand side in the middle because devil, you know, he's, he's opposite of God. He is the adversity of God and his children. God is light, he is darkness. God is good, he is evil. So they also wear upside down crosses. So from that we can know that God's imprint is found everywhere. Matthew 13 verse 13, 38 to 39, the field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil and the harvest is end of the world and the reapers are the angels. So from this we can understand one thing, the good seed are the children of God and these seed are planted by Jesus Christ. And this seed is the word of God which is planted in our heart and we've been placed in this world as light bearers, light carriers and light of the world. And we should shine, we should manifest the DNA of God. The DNA of God is his character. The DNA of God is his glory and in his, his glory is his image and his likeness. And in his image, in his likeness, he created us. And that is what is what the world is waiting for, to be revealed in us, you know, in us as sons and daughters of the Most High God. Now, this slide was given to you previously, but I want you to look at the bottom one. 1 John 3 verse 9. Whoever is born of God does not commit or continue in sin for his nature. His DNA remains in him. So as God's nature, the DNA remains in us based on 1 John chapter 1. The challenge to all of us is, are we going to abide with this DNA of God? Are we going to shine with the imprint of God's presence? living in us, represented by the Holy Spirit? Are we going to have the laws, 
the laws of God which defines and manifests the glory of God which is his character to be written in our hearts. That challenge is for you and me as we as we as we abide to the mercy of the Holy Spirit that he may help us to shine for God that we may indeed be defined by not this world not by the church not by spiritual gifts but by the very DNA the fabric of his character which is love. God bless you all.